for low low income families, I think there should be an opportunity scholarship program. So it's similar to a, a voucher, mm -hmm. but it's more um, tax credit funded. So you could have you could offer tax credits to people who give money to this, and that kind of keeps mm -hmm. the government out of it a little bit, and actually can. There's perks to that for mm -hmm. the schools anyway, but vouchers basically just allow kids um, to take state money and go attend a private school. Now in Oregon, there's some constitutional difficulties because we have something called a Blaine Amendment, but these other tax credit ideas al allow families to still make those same choices without that. And there's been a lot of studies done on vouchers. Vouchers actually have um, 17 out of 18 studies, empirical gold standard studies on voucher programs have shown that they actually improve the public schools. Mm -hmm. And the, the one study that didn't show anything, it actually said there was no difference. So, so 17 said they improve it, one said there was no difference, and these are the best studies out there. Um, gold standard is basically where you, you have a control group. So if you were to have 100 people try to get these vouchers, they all get tossed into a hat. Let's say you only have 90 vouchers to give out, mm -hmm. or 50 that for easy math. Mm -hmm. So you only have 50 vouchers to give out. Well, they follow the 50 kids who get those vouchers, and they follow the 50 kids who do not. And they're, they're pulled at random, so it's a randomized study. Mm -hmm. And they f see what happens to these kids. And um, what they found is in the vast majority of studies, I think it's 9 out of 10 now, have shown that uh, kids actually do better if they get into their school of choice. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean these schools are better. Mm -hmm. They may or they may not be you know, it depends. But it does mean that it is a better fit for those particular kids. So there's many kids who have attended great schools who it's just, it doesn't work for them. Maybe maybe they belong in a Montessori school. Maybe they belong in a religious school or, um, you know, a Waldorf school or something like that. But these studies have all shown, you know, by and large, that kids do better. And so you can actually see a, a great study on that at the Foundation for Educational Choice website. Okay. And... They've, they've got a, a wonderful um, booklet that they've made that shows very easily these studies and explains why these are the highest standard studies and why this isn't just people picking and choosing random studies to make vouchers look good. But I would like to see tax credits here in Oregon do a similar thing for families because I think that ultimately um, this is what parents want. In fact, we had a, a poll <clears throat> a poll conducted with the Foundation for Educational Choice. We, mm -hmm. we partnered with them to release it, and they hired the same people who do polls for Time Magazine and Fox News and all of these different groups, and they found that 44% of parents in Oregon wanted to send their kids to a private school. But most you know, only about 7% do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you, you bring up an interesting point, because you imagine, you know, you're a parent and, um, uh, you know, you're seeing the situation, kids aren't graduating, all kinds of problems, if you will, and this, this, that, and the other, and so, hey, look, I want to take my kids out of that environment. If you've right. got the money, you can do that. Right. If you don't have the money, you're stuck, so to speak, and then they come through this transition, if you will, of the charter situation and whatever, so let's get together and put together a school. I'm just giving you kind of a yeah. person. So, boom, now I've got the school going, if you will. That's fine, too. And then I'm thinking about uh, the, the folks who were able to actually take their kids out and send them to private school guess what, that, in all due respect, that's the top of the, of the group, if you were the top of the class. In some and cases. The, in yeah. some cases, but my point is lawyers and you know, the, the, the highly professional kinds of a folks aspect of it. But if you give them the opportunity, i.e. to address the money situation and allow that, i.e. the money to follow the kid, if you will, then all of a sudden those kids can socialize, get involved with those, those parents' kids at that level, and all of a sudden you know, you, you're at their homes and whatever, going to parents with lawyers and just that and doctors and the like and get that exposure because that's what it's all about because people who are in that on those kind of situations are very responsive they really respond to their kids to make sure <laughs> that they understand what this is all about they understand and so my point is that when, when, when I was thinking about the article about socialization aspect of it right. so I think the idea of yeah why not they pay taxes too. give right. them the opportunity if you will uh, to, uh, to to but when, when they open it up the private school to just the average person, if you will, then no problem. And then they'll be more receptive, if you will, and saying, okay, fine, they can come to this school too, right, fair? And then puts more pressure on the public school to say, okay, fine, we gotta do something to them about, because that's why we're losing the money. Right? That's more or less what happens. And I just wanna be really clear about something. Um, 
I'm not anti-public school. Oh, no. I'm not anti-public school teacher. You're pro-kids in education. Right. And the thing is, is there's a lot of excellent public schools out there. Oh. there. In fact, we have one of the best public high schools in the nation in Corbett. Tiny hmm. little Corbett really? High School. Yes, it's Why is that top so? ten. Why is that so? In Corbett? Yeah, because they had a superintendent who said that he was going to demand more and try to do things out of the box. And mm-hmm. they, they approached things very differently. Like what? Um, you got me going now. Well, you know, I talked to him about this, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago. You okay. should have him on here. Okay, you know, good. he can well, he can explain it better than I can. But Let him know. Basically, well, he, now he's a former superintendent. He started he's a, a former. Wait right. A minute, he a started a charter school in Corbett so that kids from out of district could attend the Corbett program. Okay. Because they were having problems with neighboring districts refusing to let kids transfer. Yeah, they said, we want to keep the money. We don't want that state money following that kid. We want that money. <laughs> we're not letting them transfer. And so they were running into that as a problem. And so they created a charter school and paired it right up next to their regular public school program. Okay. And it's on the same model. It runs in the same manner for and the most working. part. And it's working great. And where's the guy now? Where is he? He's running the charter school now. Well, he's running the charter school? Right. Wow. And um, his name is Bob Dunton. You can invite him we, on we, here. We get him he, on he, Yeah. He, but they decided to do things in a different way. They... They don't treat kids as though every nine-year-old is the same. They, they don't label them in the same way. So, you know, you can have one nine-year-old doing um, seventh grade work and another, you know, doing lower work and all in the same grade. You wow. know? So they, they do things differently. And well, that, class size and stuff like that. So oh, know. their classes are very, their, their total school size is very small. So mm-hmm. K through 12 total, I think it was 900 last I. I saw. So that's Mm -hmm. very small when you start breaking it, dividing Mm -hmm. 900 by 12. Mm -hmm. That's less than 100 per grade level. So it's a tiny district, but they've done a lot, and they've had more more kids taking AP classes and and passing AP exams than most large districts have. Hmm. So... um, the higher percentage. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. So they're very, they're very ranked good. by Newsweek. You can look it up, but you should have him on. <laughs> well, that'd be a good deal. Well, look at we, we've got a, we've got about another eight minutes or whatever. But I was just thinking. About, by the way, if, if you're still interested in calling, you got some time. Give us a call again at five zero three two eight eight four 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 two or five zero three two eight eight four 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 eight. Okay. I mean, Christina is really just breaking it down. I think it's good. We had Steve Buell the, this past week and whatever, and, and that's what we want to do. It's, it's about kids. And, uh, and at the same time, from a taxpayer standpoint, what are we doing with the money? Right. It's the responsibility of the money. But, but primarily, it's about the kids, whether you spend $5,000 a child or 10000 or 20000 I think the public and the taxpayer are interested in one thing. What are they, what are they turning out? Right. Are you turning out good citizens, if you will, and folks who are going to be contributors if you're to our society, but not looking at the criminal justice system where, where we're, sp- we're spending all kinds of money. You've been seeing the headlines on the criminal justice system. All of a sudden, you know, it, it's, it's more tax money. We've got the education system on one side, and we've got the criminal justice system on the other side. And I think there's a tie-in, because in all due respect, if, if the majority of those people were educated, if you will, and contributors to society, right. we'd be in a far better situation, a far better fix. So, so anyway, Christina, any lasting comments here? We've got a, a few more, just about four, maybe four or five minutes. You know, as I said, there's a lot of great teachers out there, and I, I this isn't teachers that we're against. We're not against teachers. In okay, fact, uh, the U.S. Department of Education has a re- research group, NCES, and they have conducted studies looking at who's happiest public school teachers versus private school teachers, yeah. um, charter teachers. What they found is people who work for private schools are far happier than t- pu- reg- regular public school teachers. Mm-hmm. They report that they have more influence over what's taught, how it's taught. They get a role in choosing the curriculum. They feel that they're treated like professionals. They feel that they're treated well. And now what's amazing is that private school teachers are unfortunately paid less on average here in Oregon. Mm. And I would like to see that changed. but. Mm-hmm. Um, but the bottom line is, is that they're happier, not because they're getting paid better, but because they're actually getting to use more of their skills and talents and, and they feel more professional freedom. And so I, I, this is, school choice is not something that's just about kids. It's actually also about teachers and encouraging teachers and schools and individuals to use what they're best at, to do what they're best at, rather than letting people at the very top tell them how everything should be done at the bottom. Look like we've got a call. We've got a caller here. Caller, you're on the air. Your question or comment, please. I just have a comment on 
charter schools and vouchers in general. Okay. And that is, I'm, I'm 60 years old, mm -hmm. and when I was growing up, um, everyone complained about school taxes, but they never got defeated, in, well, at least where I grew up. They always passed. Good. And so we didn't have these large class sizes. I went to public school, and I also went to parochial school. Mm -hmm. The public schools were much better then, and I find it insulting that charter schools take tax money away. Mm -hmm. Because to me, when I went to a private parochial school, my parents paid for that, and they also paid their taxes. And that was the way it was done, and in my opinion, that's the way it should be done. Okay. Public schools are there for the public. Mm -hmm. That's that's. I just want to hear hear that said out okay. loud. Okay. Because the vouchers and the charters, they seem to be the be all and end all these days. Okay. That's all. All right. Thank you very much, Carla. Well, I think that your parents should have gotten a tax credit for <laughs> for sending you to a parochial school. I think that um, that choice should be worked with. It, your parents already had uh, the difficulty of paying those taxes and paying tuition, and I think that um, they should at least get some kind of tax break for sending you to a private school. And I'm about public education. <clears throat> public education means educating the public. Does it matter where the chi child is educated? So that that would be okay. my main Let's response. take another call. We can probably spend a little bit more time no, on no, that. No. You got another call? That's about the size of it. Okay, fine. You got what, about one more minute to go. Right. Okay. Well, look. I guess we're, we're at this point now. Is that um, I'm sure that uh, people were listening out there. We probably would have had more calls, but this time we were, we were trying to get the information out, and I think it's very, very important that we do that. And um, you've got uh, Christina's uh, email address, and she'd be more than welcome, if you will, to answer your questions. Right? Fair? Is that fair? And uh, this is a very important subject, so keep your mind open, and, because it's the bottom line is about the kids, it's about the youth, it's about our future, as I've indicated to you before. Very, very important. The cost is constantly going up, and uh, and a lot of times uh, uh, the, the education, if you will, of our kids is constantly looking like it's going down, and that's the thing that bothers me. The criminal justice system is going up, and, there's, and, our, and the kids are just losing out, if you will. So uh, what we're going to do now is that we're going to probably... Uh, Maybe the entertain getting the um, the OEA on, get the OEA on, get the person, the superintendent you're talking about. Why is he doing such a better job? But he has a charter school or whatever. But we're going to stay on this particular subject. Again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Christina, for Thank being you. part of it. And we'll see you next week. As George Page always said, back to what you believe in. Have a good one.